Hello, it's Red Recap speaking. Today, I will be giving a rundown of the movie Felon, which was released in 2008. Please note that there will be spoilers in my review. Without further ado, let's dive into the film. The movie follows Wade Porter, who works at a factory and lives with his girlfriend, Laura, and their son, Michael. Wade wants a loan to marry Laura, and she's excited when he's approved. However, things take a dark turn when they hear a strange noise at home. They discover an intruder, and Wade accidentally kills the person while trying to chase them away. Despite it being unintentional, Wade feels guilty. Soon after, the police arrive. One officer says he killed the intruder while they were escaping, and since the intruder was unarmed, it can't be seen as self-defense. Wade and Laura explain their actions, but Wade is arrested and charged with murder. Vid had an issue with Tinto, a fellow prisoner who was mistreated after Vid stared at him on his first day in prison. Even though Vid's stare had no reason, they began to argue. The guards intervened and Vid was placed in a detention cell with four other strong men. The next day, Gordon went to San Quentin prison to meet an inmate named John Smith. Gordon told John that if he was responsible for the previous night's prison riots, he'd be in prison for life. However, John seemed indifferent to Gordon's words as he was preoccupied with thoughts of his son's missing birthday party. Following the tragic killing of his wife and children, it appears that John has lost all concern for his own life, particularly after avenging their deaths by killing those responsible. He's incarcerated for taking the life of the person who murdered his family. Switching focus to Wade, his public defender visits him once more and informs him that confessing to the crime will result in a shorter sentence and a fine. With little alternative, Wade agrees to the proposal, pleading guilty to manslaughter in return for a three-year prison term. Afterward, while Wade is being taken to prison on a bus, a man named Jake informs him about Samuel, an extremely dangerous inmate. Out of nowhere, Samson attacks another prisoner, then hands the bloody knife to Jake. Panicking, Jake hides the weapon under Wade's seat, cautioning him not to speak up or risk Samson's wrath. Consequently, the guards discover the knife near Wade and place him in solitary confinement. Lieutenant Jackson arrives and questions him about the stabbing, but Wade remains tight-lipped. It's at this point that Lieutenant Jackson opts to transfer him to the security housing unit, a more serious punishment. That's where they house the most serious offenders, the ones who are either serving life sentences or facing the death penalty. During the initial three months, these inmates are confined to their cells for 23 hours each day and are denied visitors. One day, Wade is taken out of his cell and brought to an area where other prisoners are gathered. Out of the blue, two men begin fighting, yet no one intervenes to stop it. It's quite surreal. In reality, these two prisoners are engaged in a gladiatorial combat that Lt. Jackson and the other guards are watching and betting on. However, once the fight concludes, the prison guards fire rubber bullets at the two inmates. One of the inmates expresses displeasure with Lt. Jackson's rules, leading to a rebellion by vocalizing his discontent. The guards then escort him to an isolated room, where Lt. Jackson proceeds to brutally assault him. A few days later, Laura comes to visit Wade in prison after a three-month absence. She admits how much she's been missing him and also reveals that she's financially struggling to care for herself and their son. Wade proposes the idea of selling their property to alleviate the situation. In the following scene, John is brought to the same prison as Wade, receiving a life sentence for provoking riots at San Quentin State Prison. John becomes Wade's cellmate in the security housing unit. Upon arrival, Wade is surprised by John's presence and offers him his bed. The next day, they're instructed to join the other inmates in the yard. There. Wade meets Jake, who informs him that Samson is thankful he didn't mention the stabbing incident on the bus. On the flip side, John recognizes and greets certain inmates who seem to hold him in esteem. Due to his history as a troublemaker and his transfers between prisons, John has developed a reputation as a respected figure in various correctional facilities. Having spent a considerable time behind bars, John begins advising Wade on survival tactics. While they're in the yard, Wade gets into a confrontation with a guy named Turner. Initially, Wade takes a beating, but he manages to fight back and gain the upper hand against Turner. Lieutenant Jackson prevents a new guard named Collins from shooting Wade with a rubber bullet, but instead orders him to shoot Turner in the leg. When Collins hesitates, Lieutenant Jackson takes matters into his own hands and fires his rifle at Turner. Wade is puzzled about why Turner was shot instead of him, but John explains that the guards set the rules and have the power to act as they please. Soon after, Hammond, the investigator, arrives at the prison as he frequently does. Why do these fights keep occurring in your prison, Lt. Jackson? Inquired Hammond. Lt. Jackson replied, attempting to deflect suspicion, that he's competent in managing the inmates and is putting in diligent efforts to prevent such altercations. Laura paid Wade another visit, bringing along their son Michael, who was ecstatic to see his father. 
Laura revealed their financial struggles, and Wade suggested selling the house. He assured Laura that he would sort everything out once he's out of prison. After the visit, Jake invited Wade to fight in the yard once again. Wade had had enough of following Jake's orders and straightforwardly told Jake that he's never been in a fight. This declaration triggered Jake and his group to turn hostile toward Wade. Suddenly, the guards stormed in, releasing tear gas to quell the fight. But the story doesn't end there, John steps in to support Wade and takes on Jake's crew. Once things calm down, John starts criticizing Wade, insisting that he should obey orders from Jake, who as it turns out, is a prominent figure in the mob, just like Samson. Meanwhile, Laura is busy sorting through paperwork to prepare for selling the house and temporarily moving back in with her mother. One day, Wade is summoned to the yard to meet Samson, who's accompanied by Jake. Jake becomes agitated when Wade doesn't comply with his instructions and complains to Samson. Suddenly, Samson commands his associates to take care of Jake. It's revealed that Samson had witnessed Jake passing a knife to Wade on the bus. Surprisingly, Samson offers Wade an opportunity to join his gang. Upon returning to his cell, Wade seeks advice from John about whether or not he should accept the offer. John advises him to take the chance, as Samson wields significant influence within the prison hierarchy. The following day, Lt. Jackson and Sgt. Roberts are watching their son's baseball game from the sidelines. In the course of their conversation, Roberts shares his worries about their harsh treatment of prisoners, fearing potential consequences like losing their jobs. He advises Jackson to adhere to the prison regulations and cease mistreating the inmates. However, Jackson is confident that he won't face repercussions and insists on maintaining his own approach. One evening, Wade asks John why he didn't kill those who murdered his family. John explains that he deliberately chose not to end their lives, opting instead to target their loved ones so that they could experience the agony of losing everyone dear to them. Laura's visit to Wade's prison turns heart-wrenching when she discovers that her son has become part of a gang. Overwhelmed by emotions and grappling with her struggles to support her child, she breaks down in tears. Eventually, she departs, leaving Wade infuriated and frustrated. Later, in the prison yard, Wade becomes the target of an attack by a newly arrived inmate, leading Lt. Jackson to fire a shot. Subsequently, Lt. Jackson resumes his questioning of Wade about the stabbing incident involving Samson. Despite the pressure, Wade remains resolute in his silence, explaining that he can't speak out due to threats from Samson. Wade refuses to implicate Samson as the culprit who killed someone on the bus. In a deceitful move, Lt. Jackson falsely claims that Wade was involved in the murder, resulting in an additional six-year sentence for Wade. Consequently, Laura decides to end her relationship with Wade through a letter, unable to wait for another six years. This devastating news leaves Wade shattered and enraged. With nothing left to lose, he starts engaging in fights with other inmates. John had advised Wade to avoid getting into fights and to control his anger. Sadly, Wade had reached a point where he had lost all hope. Then, unexpectedly, Officer Gordon and John's friend visited Wade in prison, but John suggested his friend to stop visiting, considering it a futile effort. Meanwhile, Laura and her mother were packing up their things. When they reached Wade's belongings, their son questioned why they weren't taking his father's items as well. Laura explained that they were no longer living together, devastating the young boy. Realizing that Michael couldn't bear being without his father, Laura returned to visit Wade and pledged to wait for his release for the sake of their son. When Wade heard this news, he was elated and shared the joyous development with John upon returning to his cell. After a discussion with John, Wade devises a plan to uncover the truth about the violence he's endured in prison and potentially secure his release. Collaborating with John, they begin brainstorming. Initially, Wade approaches Lt. Jackson and requests permission to fight a new inmate, Tinto, who has recently arrived in their area. He claims he wants to seek revenge for the mistreatment Tinto has faced. Lt. Jackson agrees to the fight but with the condition that it must result in one of their deaths. Subsequently, Wade asks Laura to meet with Officer Gordon. With John's assurance that Gordon can help expose the abuse committed by Lt. Jackson within the prison, Wade hopes to move forward with his plan. The day of the anticipated fight finally arrives. Wade and Tinto engage in a heated argument, though Wade finds it difficult to confront Tinto. Meanwhile, Laura and Gordon, accompanied by Investigator Hammond, head to the prison to apprehend Lt. Jackson for his arbitrary actions. On the sidelines, John conceals his improvised weapon beneath his glasses. As the fight unfolds, Wade gains the upper hand, rendering Tinto unconscious. However, Wade refuses to deliver a fatal blow, infuriating Lt. Jackson. In a tense moment, Lt. Jackson reaches for his gun, aiming to shoot Wade. The other inmates, including John, step in to shield Wade from harm. Despite threats from Lt. Jackson to shoot everyone, Roberts attempts to reason with him, 
highlighting the severe consequences of his reckless actions. Eventually, Lt. Jackson orders the prisoners to return to their cells. But as John and Wade head in that direction, a guard interrupts and escorts them to the yard. Here, Lt. Jackson prepares to eliminate Wade and shifts the blame onto John. Roberts, unwilling to be a part of this situation, opts to leave. Amidst this chaos, Collins secretly activates the surveillance cameras to capture evidence of Lt. Jackson's mistreatment of the prisoners. Lt. Jackson is poised to harm Wade, when suddenly John intervenes and slits Jackson's throat. However, another officer in the prison shoots John, leading to his demise. Collins presses the emergency button, alerting the other guards on the premises. Meanwhile, Investigator Hammond, Gordon, and Laura arrive as well. Collectively, they expose Lt. Jackson's corrupt activities and unethical behavior, which postpones Wade's sentence extension. After serving 15 months, Wade is granted parole and is finally able to return home to his family. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thanks and see you again soon. Take care.